Hey Metalheads, I'm Julia from Thrashboom Bang and today I'm talking to Jaco and Nico from Mariana's Rest. Hey guys. Hello. 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 Um, on March 12th, your new album will be released and um, when I listened to it, I had a feeling that um, it goes straight from the first song to the very last song. Um, is it based on a specific concept? Can you say something about it? Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it it is a concept album, at least sort of. <laughs> uh, the the kind of it's a story album, at least. Uh, it started the story started on our first record, Horror Vakui, and uh, continued on the second album, and now uh, we come to the conclusion uh, and. Uh, the idea of the story, the, the narrator or the main character uh, uh, has kind of uh, had, he's lost his place uh, in the world and um, started to feel uh, the hollow feelings uh, in today's modern world. And uh, on the second album, he had uh, a breakdown, uh, everything f fell into pieces. And uh, on the third album, uh, it's kind of the aftermath. He, he picks the pieces up, what's left of it at least, and uh, starts a long journey uh, to to a cold place, uh, to the edges of the world, at least his own world. Uh, and um, on the path, uh, he tries to sort out what went wrong, what what did I do, uh, how did I make so bad judgments, and. Um, yeah, that's kind of the story, and uh, the name uh, name of the album comes from the uh, realization that uh, he's been in 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 the cold of the world so long that he's kind of be become numb, uh, and uh, he has seen things kind of distorted way. Uh, the Fata Morgana is, um illusion that can be caused by cold, and so. That's where the name come from, comes from. Yeah, all, the, all his judgments are kind of flawed because of the distortion. Okay, yeah, I think you can really hear yeah. and feel it in the music. Um, yeah, how sad and desperate this person <laughs> is. Um, you really did a great, I must say. Uh, thanks. <laughs> uh, we're kind of... Uh, we uh, live and die but with, with our atmosphere. <laughs> if, if we <laughs> fail to create an atmosphere, that's when, well, nothing works after that. Yeah. 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 Okay. And um, yeah, the album sounds a lot more heavier and yeah, with more doom influences to me than ruins. So, uh, what did you do differently? Did you make any changes? And can you say a Anything about the creation and recording process of the album? Well, I think uh, on the writing side of things, I think we stopped uh, trying to uh, involve these uh, death metal cliches and all these tremolo guitars, double bass, all, all that stuff that maybe we did before. And we just let the songs develop by themselves, I think. We didn't try to force them in any direction or uh, try to uh, make them heavier. Mm. I think when we decided not to do that, they became heavier in their own uh, or on their own, I think. And uh, well, that's the biggest difference between the last album and this one. Yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I think that it's heavier too. Uh, but it, it's also at the same time it's kind of lighter. Uh, yeah. It has more air to it, and maybe that's why um, it kind of. Uh, well, I, we think it's it's a better album than the previous two, and because of the both sides are, are kind of uh, on the fo the focus is clearer maybe on this album. At least that's how we see it now. Yeah. At the time when we we were doing the songs. Uh, you really can't tell. You can see it uh, maybe better afterwards. Okay. And um, you said um, 
the songs came right out of you, so to speak. Um, your lyrics are incredibly um, dark and they are very poetic. Who writes the lyrics and um, where do you take your inspiration this, for this darkness and heaviness and sadness? Uh, uh, well, I, I might mainly write the lyrics uh, at least um, uh, at the beginning, but everybody <laughs> kind of uh, gets to have their own, own ideas in and we this demo, our band is a democracy, so everybody kind of does everything uh, and uh, uh, well, but uh, maybe the, the the main influences and the, and the ideas they come from uh, everyday life. Uh, there are parts of our own personal struggles, desperations, and and of course the how the way of the world, human nature. Uh, it's kind of an endless uh, source for stories, uh, and. Um, yeah, that, that's where it's hard to kind of name just a few, but there are kind of um, a few uh, philosophers uh, that, that, well, sometimes a word or two or a sentence here and there, and you just kind of pick it up and, and it, it starts to live its own life. Uh, and, and then it's finally, it, it's, it's a lyrical concept. It's hard to kind of say how it goes because it's it, there's some subconscious uh, stuff uh, going in our heads when it happens, yeah. and then eventually it's a song. Yeah. <laughs> and do you first write the lyrics or the music, or do you have any structures there? Uh, well, the music comes first usually. Yeah. 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 Most all, every time, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, it's easier to uh, um, Nico and Harry. Well, you can take it through how you kind of uh, take it, that start start the process. Yeah, I think the typical songwriting process is that uh, me or the other guitar player, Harry, or on these days our bass player also does this. We do these very, very rough demos which may have a, uh, an idea for a chorus or a verse or something. And then we try to make it uh, on the demo stage. We try to build it to a point when it's uh, at least somehow playable. And then the whole band comes along and then we'll start jamming with the song and we build it as a group. And um, uh, usually when, when the songs are uh, in a more more ready form, uh, then we start figuring out the lyrics. Yeah, it's easier to uh, kind of uh, have an idea for a story or a concept when you have some sort of, usually the demos bring in some sort of visual image uh, or, or a feel and then you just try to kind of follow the feeling and, and make the lyrics uh, go with the song. Of course, they have to be in the same ball, ballpark you can't have yeah. uh, and and because the music is is melancholic of course then the lyrics are are also uh, and well we haven't really tried to make a cheerful song but <laughs> I, I, I think it, it, it would not be very good <laughs> it would fail yeah. Yeah. maybe interesting <laughs> sorry for <the> failure <laughs> Well, maybe one day we see one if you are in a very, very happy mood. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, well um, probably um, uh, it's, it's just, we're not going to publish it, <laughs> I'd say. But I've always wanted to make a music video somewhere on a beach drinking margaritas and stuff. <laughs> Only one with music videos. It's cold as fuck and <laughs> freezing our asses off for a couple of days. So. It's a surf punk side project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my wife style uh, <laughs> boats and maybe ladies and cocktails. 
<laughs> but it would also be an interesting contrast when you're lying on a beach with your drinks, the ladies in bikinis around you, and you make some melancholic stuff. <laughs> <so sad. laughs> yeah, maybe we should try something like that. <laughs> well, definitely. Okay, um, we talked about the inside of the album, so to speak. Now let's talk about the outside of the album. I really like the artwork and I think it rounds off the album perfectly. Um, can you tell us who made it and who was this person maybe involved into the whole process? Uh, well, his name is Chertil. Uh, from hailing from Norway, uh, maybe you can feel it on the cover art. <laughs> they are pretty Norwegian, I think. Uh, um, uh, the the whole process went. Uh, the, the, actually, the pictures were already there when when we were just working on the album. Um, none of us are very good uh, visually. Like. Uh, well, we we know what we want, but we cannot draw or anything like that. So then we just um, started to look for something that would resonate with with the material we had. And um, well, thank God for internet. Chetil <laughs> 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 has loads of uh, good pictures uh, on his uh, social media accounts, and that's how we kind of uh, found him and. Uh, uh, it was love at first sight. Uh, you could tell instantly that this is what we want because, yeah, as you said, the, they kind of uh, complete the, the music, I'd say. Uh, yeah, they yeah. they uh, go very well with it and he's a very nice guy. Uh, luckily, he, he didn't think our music was total crap, so he, <laughs> he was uh, ready to, to cooperate. And uh, uh, if you're looking this, Chetil, uh, <laughs> Finland. Well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> but I can't believe the pictures existed before um, the album. It fits so well, really great. Yeah, and it would be a nicer thing to say that we kind of uh, uh, told Chetil that this is what we want, and to kind of pull, were, would be pulling the strings, and he would just do what we determined. <laughs> but uh, uh, we are too honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, now, very general questions you maybe heard very often before, but um, maybe there are some people who don't know it so far. Um, what does your band name Mariana's Rest mean? Mm, well, I think when we tried to figure out the name for this project, uh, we were, well, having, having a few beers like usual. And, uh, <clears throat> We thought that we needed something that would resonate with the music. I mean, something that was deep, uh, dark, uh, this feeling of pressure and heaviness. And um, well, the Marianas Trench is a pretty, <laughs> pretty dark and cold and pressurized place. So we started from there, but uh, we wanted to have our own kind of a twist to the name. Uh, also, there is a band called Marianas Trench and if you Google Mariana's Trench, you get all sorts of geographical sites. So maybe yeah. it wouldn't be that that good any anyhow. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's kind of um, I like to think that in the name um, the Mariana's Trench is is one of the mysteries of the world. As nobody really knows what lies in the dark. So so it's a cool thing to have something like that uh, yeah. in your name, at least uh, on a symbolic level. Yeah. Yeah. OK, you have to tell me the name of the brand from the beer you're drinking when you get such good ideas from <laughs> <laughs> it. Maybe I should try it. <laughs> OK. Um, 
Now to a not so funny topic, I think. Um, how did Corona situation um, affect you as a band? Well, there's no shows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, luckily, it didn't affect that much on the actual recording process. I mean, the songs were ready before the pandemic hit and the studio was booked so that the lockdowns had been taken down in Finland. <laughs> so we were able to pretty much do it normally. Uh, we had some safety measures. We had one or two guys at the same time at the studio and, and such, but pretty pretty normally yeah and uh, uh yeah the, the yeah well if some someone else of us would would have gotten ill then it would have been a different game but uh we have all managed to stay stay healthy so yeah. so um i think we've had it easier than many other bands because uh well we are still pretty uh, young, uh, not that big band. We don't have um, heavy kind of uh, uh, infrastructure or, or people working for us or, or that sort of thing. So uh, that would have made things a whole lot harder. But uh, yeah, of course, this sucks big time for, for everyone who is in the industry. Uh, hopefully it won't last long anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's definitely a, a big problem when it comes to releasing the album because uh, before you were able to go on tour once you released the album, so you were able to keep it relevant uh, by touring, but now you have to figure out some circus tricks <laughs> on how to get yeah. out <laughs> close for more than two days. So I don't know. Let's yeah, see what I we saw. Can I saw you will be doing a release show on Facebook or something like that. Yeah, well, well, maybe it will turn out to be a show. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we just mainly we just want to kind of um, uh, note that the album is out and just talk about it a bit uh, over a campfire or something like that and uh, have people to join us. Uh, but we will be doing uh, we will be playing the songs too uh, and uh, and. Uh, you will get to listen to them uh, played live, but it won't happen uh, at the same weekend as the record comes out uh, a bit later. Yeah. But yeah, that's one of the things that kind of uh, we thought about uh, kind of a full stream show, but there's so much uh, the place we are playing, uh, there are not, not very good connections and that sort of stuff. So there would be uh, if if there would be some kind of uh, internet problem or or that sort of thing, it would be a huge bummer for people that would want to see it. So we are kind of making it playing safe, yeah, uh, so yeah. safe. Okay. And uh, did you have some cancelled shows during this time, or didn't you uh, didn't you have planned any shows? We had a bunch. Yeah, I can't remember how many, but. No, uh, it wasn't this big tour or something that was cancelled. Uh, <laughs> some singles shows here and there, but yeah. yeah, yeah, this has lasted so long now that we didn't have uh, kind of we didn't get to plan a tour even because uh, well we were working on the album and usually well yeah you do it at the same time uh, you you plan the tour but we didn't because we didn't have a publisher or anything like that we just kind of uh went our own <laughs> own mysterious ways and <laughs> and uh, then, then the epidemics uh, hit and uh well now it is what it is maybe that was a fluke too uh, yeah. yeah okay and maybe you had a bit time did you um yeah have any get any new skills during the lockdown maybe new instrument new language you learn knitting or gardening or something else <laughs> <laughs> well i was also a ma uh, already a master in knitting so <laughs> <laughs> my skill is perfectly crafted <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know if I've learned any new skill. I, I don't know. Uh, I've worked a lot and I've slept a lot. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I've learned to be by myself more. <laughs> that is true. I've learned to like my own thoughts. <laughs> Now I have more voices in my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes it can be difficult to live uh, with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends on who you are. <laughs> we are not <laughs> easy. We are, we are not people. <laughs> I hope that other persons in your head weren't too rude to you. <laughs> One of one of them is a major asshole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we, we we the other guys uh, won't talk to him anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> I think we quickly change topic now before it gets too deep. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, is there any special or funny moment from a concert or a tour you remember you want to tell us? Well, there is a few. Yeah, we've had uh, a few Spinal Tap <laughs> moments. Uh, uh, well, um, the, the one we had a few kind of strange uh, accidents or occurrences in, 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 in Russia. But I wasn't there. You were. Yeah, there were the Russian Russian guys who sold cutlets at a nightclub and <laughs> at lockers for guns. And then in Czech Republic, there was this. We played in this. It was a cave built under a hotel. And then the <laughs> the bar owner, the guy was this. He was this huge guy waving an axe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, over the bar. <laughs> over the bar, yeah. For a moment, we thought that we were going to end up in the uh, river next to the place. <laughs> <laughs> or buried somewhere. <laughs> but, but, uh, but yeah, it was one of the, I think, it one, one of the best evenings so far. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not all axe-wielding big guys are, are evil. <laughs> 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 nice, the sweetest. Guy. Yeah, yes. that's good. Otherwise, you won't sit here anymore, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, great, uh, uh, greetings to Hellwicker if you're if you are on on the line. <laughs> Okay, um, now I have four short questions left for you. Um, uh, it would be good if you could answer them very short and spontaneous. <laughs> Are you ready? All right, let's go. My favorite band is? Sentence at Alice in Chains. Okay, and um, if I were an instrument, I would be? Bass. <laughs> <laughs> That right. needs some explanation. <laughs> Melodica. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, performing live or recording in studio? What do you prefer? Live. Live. Because of the energy or? Yeah, it's it's something you can't get anywhere else. Uh, you kind of just lose moment uh, or or the time and the place and and kind of connect with the people who are who are there with you. And yeah, it's it's a unique thing. Yeah. Okay. And the last question is: music means to me. Uh, life. Yeah. <laughs> It's a necessity. Yeah. Uh, um, well, uh, we we would be a lot worse shape than we are <laughs> without music. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, ventilation system for all, all the kind of crappy things in life. You can just put it in the kind of deal with it through music. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can totally agree with that. Well. Our little interview comes to an end now. 
Um, thank you so much for joining the interview. I thank wish you all the best for you and your band and with the album. And maybe when this whole Corona thing is over, we meet on a concert in Germany. I hope it so much. <laughs> well, we too. That would yeah. be great. And uh, yeah, th this will go over. Uh, we are yeah. uh, back in business in no time and having having beers together and, and listening <laughs> to good shows. I'm, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. I think we are all missing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, then rock on and thanks again and bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank bye you. bye. bye.